Lately, Meghan has been warned that waging a woke war on Hollywood could backfire with disastrous consequences for her and Prince Harry's own TV and film production company. After Meghan used her Spotify podcast last week to condemn toxic Asian stereotypes, a studio boss said she's ruffling feathers by attacking 20-year-old iconic movies based on today's new woke morality and isn't exactly endearing herself to studios she and Prince Harry might hope to work with. If she continues, she'll be playing with fire and that could have disastrous consequences for their company, Archwell. In her podcast, Megan fumed, movies like Austin Powers and Kill Bill presented these characters of Asian women as over-sexualized or aggressive. And it's not just these two examples, there are so many more. Lucy Liu has defended her Kill Bill role saying her character was one of four professional female killers of different ethnicities, adding, I could have been wearing a tuxedo and a blonde wig and would still have been labeled a dragon lady. The Quentin Tarantino fan club called Megan silly and urged her to watch Kill Bill again, adding, Lucy Liu kills macho and bad men. She's a strong woman. Moreover, journalist Fraser Myers and former MP Lembit Opik criticized Prince Harry and Meghan Markle as they reportedly have second thoughts over their Netflix documentary. They said, Harry and Meghan want to be part of the Hollywood world, but they don't have either the talent or the charisma. Furthermore, columnist Daniela Elsa has claimed that the Sussexes have to keep putting in good work in order to keep their deals with high profile businesses they're reliant on for their various projects. The pressure on the Sussexes to deliver must be immense, no less than their future ability to keep the lights on and the fridge stocks with organic hummus depends on it, she said. Elsa said that the couple had no guarantees that big entertainment companies would keep sticking around and giving them opportunities if their content didn't live up to expectations. She explained that Spotify has decided to make changes to its type of content and no one is safe for that reason. Elsa pointed out that Megan had already had a taste of this when her animated children's series was aborted in a high profile cancellation. In her column she wrote, The pressure on the Sussexes to deliver must be immense. No less than their future ability to keep the lights on and the fridge stocked with organic hummus depends on it. Being incredibly famous is no guarantee that entertainment giants will keep ponying up these checks that are stuffed with more zeros than a sold out Marga rally. This pressure, she said, was now being kicked up a gear following rumours that the Sussexes' new at home docuseries on Netflix could be under threat because of the Queen's death and Harry's father Charles' ascension to the throne. According to a Hollywood source, I wonder if the show could even be dead in the water at this point. Do Harry and Meghan just want to shelve the thing? Elsa pointed out that given this pressure to deliver, Harry and Meghan had just exchanged being accountable to one powerful organisation to them being accountable to a number of powerful organisations who have to keep shareholders sweet. The expression out of the frying pan and into the fire comes to mind here, she added. Meanwhile, Kinsey Schofield podcast host and Raw commentator said the video streaming giant would be humiliated if nothing came from their partnership with the Sussexes. Miss Schofield added, Netflix has invested way too much in the Sussexes for this project to be shelved. Harry and Meghan might not love the final product, but it will inevitably hit the streaming platform. The streaming giant would be humiliated if nothing came to fruition with their partnership. The Sussexes earned a ludicrous amount of money for their relationship with Netflix, and the hype around their content has been non-stop. 